Hi, Dr. Brian Kaufman, a retired family doctor and the co-founder, chief medical officer and executive vice president of the nonprofit CLL Society. And I'm going to be presenting some important papers for CLL patients from ASH, the American Society of Hematology 2023 annual meeting. And this paper deals with the calibrutinib, venetoclax, and obinutuzumab, sometimes called ADO, in treating relapsed refractory chronic lymphocytic leukemia. So, What's the bottom line about this? Well, this paper had some very interesting parts to it. MRD, or using measurable residual disease guided therapy of this combination of a calibrutinib, venetoclax, and obinutuzumab, led to an 88% progression-free survival in relapsed refractory chronic lymphocytic leukemia. 42 out of 45 patients reached undetectable measurable residual disease in the peripheral blood. And it introduces to CLL something that's just beginning to be used in solid tumors, which is circulating tumor DNA or ctDNA in the plasma to look for improved evidence of the disease being eliminated, but also early detection of relapse. So who performed the research and where it was presented? Dr. Maurice Faustenau led a group of German researchers in presenting the abstract. Long-term remissions from MRD-guided acalabrutinib, venetoclax, and obinutuzumab and relapsed refractory CLL. Follow-up and circulating tumor DNA analysis of the CLL2 BAAG trial was presented at the American Society of Hematology's annual meeting in 2023 held in San Diego, California. In the way of background, the CLL Society has previously reported on this phase two uh, CLL2 bag trial that used this combination of a calibrutinib, venetoclax, and obinutuzumab, AVO, after a potential debulking or reducing the load of tumor by using a chemotherapy drug, bendamustin, in patients with relapsed refractory CLL. That was an option to use the bendamustin. Um, it had failed to reach its primary endpoint of a 90% undetectable MRD, with 75.6 reaching undetectable MRD in the peripheral blood at approximately six months of the tri uh, triplets. For comparison, bovin, a different trial, which used venetoclax plus obinutuzumab and xanabrutinib, achieved an 89% UMRD at 10 months. This abstract will update the data and adds new information on circulating tumor DNA analysis with a longer follow-up. So what was the method and who are the participants? Well, the method was obinutuzumab was started in cycle one, acalabrutinib was added in cycle two, and venetoclax was added in cycle three. Maintenance therapy with continuous acalabrutinib and venetoclax and obinutuzumab every three months, so that's a little different, obinutuzumab every three months, until there was achievement of both undetectable MRD to 10 to the minus fourth in the blood and reaching a complete remission or for up to two years. So you got treated for two years or it stopped, it was MRD guided, if it you reached undetectable measurable residual disease and a complete remission. In other words, all your nodes, your spleen, if it had been enlarged, everything had shrunk back to normal. And your counts, all your blood counts were back in the normal range. MRD was measured using flow cytometry in the blood and by a method that's popular in Europe, not used much in the US, digital droplet polymerase chain reaction, or PCR, that looks for the unique DNA signature in the CLL in its, um, that is, um, that, that's what it, it does. Looks for this unique signature of the DNA that's found floating in the, in the, in the blood plasma. It's not cell-based, it's free of the cells. UMRD was defined as less than one in 10,000 leukocytes and no circulating tumor DNA. Patients to be included have had to have 
relapsed or refractory chronic lymphocytic leukemia that required treatment. 46 patients were originally included in the trial, but one was excluded from analysis as he didn't really meet the admission criteria. Of the 46 patients, 18 had had prior BTK inhibitors and or venetoclax. 14 of 44, or 31.8%, had deletion 17P, so almost a third had that high risk, and or TP53, and three quarters had unmutated IGHV. So what were the results of this group? With a median follow-up of slightly less than three years, all patients were off treatment. The time of treatment on average was 14.7 months, so just a couple months over, two and a half months over uh, a year. Following the MRD uh, and response-guided approaches, 25 of the, of the patients, or 55.6%, discontinued therapy, having achieved undetectable measurable disease, while nine completed the maximum of eight maintenance cycles due to persistent MRD or lack of a complete response. Undetectable measurable disease was found in over three quarters of the patients when checked at six months, with 10 patients still showing detectable MRD at that time. However, with the maintenance therapy, seven of those 10, or 70%, achieved undetectable measurable residual disease. What about those three patients that didn't? One had Richter's transformation, and two still had detectable MRD after eight full cycles. Therefore, UMRD was achieved down to 10 to the minus fourth in 42 of 45 patients, or 93.3% at some point. Results were similar whether the patients had had prior exposure to a BTK inhibitor or venetoclax, and if they had 17P deletion or TP53. Median progression-free survival has not been reached, and the overall survival was perfect at 100%. One patient died of COVID-19 18 months after the end of the trial. Let's talk about this flow cytometry versus circulating uh, tumor DNA for detection of relapse. There was 564 paired samples that compared the flow cytometry, the traditional way for looking for relapse, versus uh, the, uh, uh, the circulating tumor DNA that were available for analysis. 17 patients in the group went from undetectable MRD to detectable, the first very early signs that they might be relapsing. 11 of those 17 were detected by um, uh, circulating DNA first, and only three were first discovered by flow cytometry. The rest were discovered simultaneously. What were the adverse events? The most adverse, common adverse events were COVID-19, seen in eight of the patients, pneumonia in five, infusion reactions from the obinutuzumab, and low neutrophil counts. So what can we conclude? The triplet of a calibrutinib, venetoclax, and obinutuzumab, sometimes called AVO, has impressive results in helping patients reach UMRD, undetectable measurable disease, and more importantly, high rates of progression-free survival and a perfect 100% overall survival rate at 30 months. However, excellent results are seen with other combinations of two or three drugs. Fewer drugs may come with several advantages, including reduced immune su uh, suppression, lower risk of side effects, cost saving, and the preservation of more future options. Which combination of drugs is best is not known. This study also introduces the potential power of circulating tumor DNA, ctDNA, as a way to, to detect very small amounts uh, of um, CLL in the peripheral blood. Its role in monitoring disease versus flow cytometry and next generation sequencing, such as Clonaseq, is still to be determined but it does seem to offer another powerful tool to monitor CLL, especially when the number of cancer cells in the blood is very low. So we have another excellent combination, and we have a new way of measuring our CLL. Overall, very exciting results presented at ASH 2023. Thanks for your attention.
Stay strong. We are all in this together. Thank you.